grandfather, Dr. Charles Sandy Smith, was a famous pediatrician. He went to Cornell, he graduated first in his class from medical school, he was a professor at the College of Physicians and Surgeons in New York City, the head of Bellevue Children's Hospital. He was an amazing man. During World War II, uh, I should say, at late afternoon and evenings, he would get in his car and drive all over the place to visit his patients, his young children, patient, young babies and young children, because he was also had his, he also had his own medical practice until he was about 85 or 86 and his hearing started to go. During World War II, my own father was in the Pacific serving in the Army, and my family lived with my grandpa Charlie and his, his wife. In fact, when I was born, it was Grandpa Charlie who went to the hospital to take my mother and myself back to their home where we stayed until my dad returned from the war a couple of years later. So he really helped to raise me in those important early years. It's really interesting to think that even through all these uh, times, we kept in touch in college and whenever. In his later years, he built a house near my family. We were now living in Princeton, New Jersey. And in the afternoons, I would often bridle up my pony dandy, ride across the couple of roads, a couple of trails to his house and spend a few hours with him. It was really a very special, glorious time. His wife had died. He enjoyed the company, and I just loved to be with him. He taught me about identifying wildflowers and their names. I mean, how to paint with oils, all about gardening. He stressed how important it was to do well in school. And he explained why the Yankees were the best baseball team. <laughs> so fast forward to the 1970s, early 1970s. I was then living on a working farm in southeastern New Hampshire, near the seacoast. It was a very busy place. I had many foster children raising uh, also my birth son, my firstborn birth son, who was 18 months old. And there was a barn full and pasture full of animals of all sorts. There was a lot to do. When my, my firstborn was 18 months old, my secondborn son arrived at Exeter Hospital. He was born a low birth weight baby. He weighed about four pounds. When he was born, he it was very quiet. He was quiet. And they immediately took him out of the delivery room and prepped him for the long ambulance ride to Boston, where he would be in a, in a neonatal intensive care unit at, at Boston Children's Hospital. I was never allowed to see or touch or hold my much loved baby boy. So the next morning, the do doctor who had delivered Benjamin, my little baby, um, my dear regular obstetrician was away for the week. He came into the room. Um, he was a gruff, tall, older man. He had on his white starch doctor's jacket, stethoscope around his neck. I was sitting on the edge of a narrow hospital bed uh, in a Johnny. Do you remember the Johnnies? Yeah. They were at that time very short, little ties you tried to make knots on the back. It, it was not a very powerful position to be in. <laughs> um, as soon as I saw him, I looked up and I just burst into tears. I was so worried about my son, so far away in Boston. And just seeing him reminded me of what I'd been through the, the night before. So that day and night, I fervently prayed. And remember, I'm the agnostic Unitarian among all these people. <laughs> uh, but I prayed and prayed. I prayed that my son would be brave, that he would be strong, that he could feel my love from across the miles and that he would live. So the next morning, oh, I should say, the doctor, by the way, um, seeing me cry, 
left the room quickly without saying anything and closed the door firmly, leaving me by myself. So the next morning, a nurse came into the room and said I had a phone call. Well, you know, now every room has its own extension, right? At that time, the only way you had phone calls going in or out was through the payphone. And the payphone was way down in a long hallway. So I went down the hall, expecting it to be one of my sisters who might call to, to, to say they're thinking of me. So I pick up the phone, and it was not one of my sisters. It was a nurse from Boston Children's Hospital who said, your son has died. What do you want us to do with his body? So I stumbled back down the long hallway, um, went into my room, fell into the bed, uh, my face covered with my hands, my pillow is soaking with my tears. A staff member comes, hears me wailing, and closes the door firmly. This is home. It was a terrible time, I felt so guilty and so that I had given birth too early, I felt just overwhelmed with sadness. So the next day I go home to you know, a house full of these foster children and my birth son, first born, born son, and lots of responsibilities. And I try to work really hard <coughs> to how to keep up with things. But in all honesty, inside myself I was numb. I was just hardly able to function emotionally. Uh, I could keep going and kind of doing the, what had to be done physically, but emotionally I was a total wreck. So about a month later, I had a dream. It was a very vivid, incredibly alive dream. It was really more like a visitation. And I still remember it very, very clearly to this day. So what did I see? There was my grandpa Charlie sitting in his wingback chair, his familiar tweed coat, college tie. I remember his hands, of course, you know, the arthritic hands of, a, of, a, of an older man, a much older, and the, the veins on his back of his hands, I, I recognize that in the age spots, uh, it was definitely him. And he looked relaxed, he was leaning forward a little bit. Um, looking down, and then I saw that in his arms he was very lovingly and tenderly holding my infant son. The room was bathed with light. It was an amazing sight and experience. So the next morning my then husband said I looked different. I wasn't so agitated, I wasn't so distracted, and indeed I was changed because there was still a lingering sadness, softened, but I knew without a question, without a doubt, that my son, my little Benjamin son, was okay and would be forever cared for tenderly by my grandpa Charles. Mm -hmm.